Alright, I got up early before work. I'm out here checking everything out, trying to remember. And uh, it's all coming clear to me here. Um, we're gonna have to get this exhaust disconnected, power steering pump off. So I'm gonna replace that, get a new one, because I remember it being kind of weak. Gearbox too. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get AC pump and alternator disconnected. Get this hose probably out of our way. Get the plenum cold packs. Throttle linkage, throttle body. Uh, might take off the brake booster just so I don't accidentally hit it or something. Oh man, it's cold out here. Um, let's see. Yeah, just kind of got to get started. Let's see. Got to take this guy off. Touch it, it all just comes apart all by itself. I didn't even gotta do nothing. The trucks love me. Let's see about this alternator here. Yeah. Staring, you see, uh, about to be alternator. Gotta get these coal packs off too. <sighs> Third body, not to mention the starter, all the bolts holding the bell housing to the engine. Whew. Got a ways to go. But yeah, coal packs are pretty easy. It's got this one bolt down here, here, up in the corner up here. Here, holding this little plug on there. Then, other than your plug here and here, once you get all that off, the whole thing will come off. to me so we got to get this guy off too which is very easy because you have the room <laughs> all right let's see here Definitely first things first is get this all out of there but after you get these four nuts off you know, we yank right out and you got a little hose Oh, wait. I think because of my spacer, I ain't gonna have enough room. Yep, I'm gonna have to take these threads out. And we're back, it is midday. Um, but yeah, after you get this, uh, the box off here, air box, um, once it, all the throttle body will come off, you just got a uh, throttle position sensor and uh, AIC probably. Um, a little hose on the bottom. I'm gonna take out those top threads. Get all that kind of unplugging out of the way. Just put the bottom body over here. Set it all neatly as I can until we can get it on the shelves in there anyway. Alright, next thing is a uh, Clean them. Just got these bolts laying in the back. People are like, what the heck do you do? Well, just raise them up and put some tape around them to keep them from falling back in. That one way in the back, that one, and this one. And that really helps out. And even do these right here too. 
Now we got these bolts down here, we gotta still take off, but watch, it's very easy. And then, once you get everything unplugged, you got all the appropriate hoses like this one, and then you got two back there. Uh, got a little plug right there for the uh, map. And uh, yeah, pretty much as you get that, all your bolts, all these are taped up and out of the way. Um, this is probably gonna be in the way. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be in the way. Um, but once that's out of the way, see all the bolts only need to go about an inch. Keep them from falling down in the intake valley and keeping you from scooting it and break the gasket. I'm just slipping my hand right up underneath this and pulling it towards me. Plug everything, all of our injectors. Um, I already got the uh, intake air temperature sensor, or whatever that is, unplugged. Uh, and then, let's see, tuckle that starter. Yeah, let's just get all this unplugged real quick. So, the dang uh, um, cam sensor. Is not gonna fit through there <laughs> at all. So we're gonna have to take off the whole uh, uh, AC bracket. Oh well. It's off. What you gonna do about it? Okay, I don't know how well you guys can see, but. Harness up here, out of the way. It's pretty much bare up on top here. That's right, we are getting so close. You see these uh, these guys right here? They run to the heater core right there, which is impossible to change those hoses out whenever this thing's in the way. The uh, big clean them. But anyway, all the cords are out of the way. I'll probably go ahead and pull the fuel rails because they're pretty easy, just a few little torques bolts down in there. Um, disconnect the fuel line back here. Oh yeah, if you want to know how I did that, but if you want to know how I did that, could not for the life of me find my fuel line disconnecting little kit and I do not know where it's at. I have no idea. So <laughs> I took my water bottle there and uh, cut the top of it off with, you know, just a knife and I shoved that down in there. It was actually a pretty good idea, I guess. I guess the way it was trimmed off, but just shoved it down in there, used a uh, little screwdriver to push it down, pulled it forward, pushed it out, and it came right out. I couldn't believe how easy it was after 30, 45 minutes of trying to look for that kit and still didn't find it. But yeah, gotta get that uh, starter, fuel rails. Let's do the fuel rails real quick. You got your six bolts out. The uh, whole thing just comes up. Uh, comes out as one piece here. Probably put these back in the uh, lower intake. Now the heater core hoses down here. Um, got a bucket down there. We have to get those out of the way, you know, so we gotta, yeah, 
Let's see if we make a mess here. Let's crack them loose. And... No. Well, that's freaking awesome. Let's do the same thing here. <sighs> I don't really want to hold it while it's pinned, so just let it do its thing. We'll just just look over here or something. Yeah, I'm gonna let that drain out, and then uh, we'll go ahead and get this connected here. It's another bracket right back in there, and uh, yeah, we should be able to just pull loose enough out of the way. All right. wires down there across the bottom of the block for oil pan and got some transmission lines going down the oil pan over there. The starter underneath. I'll try to knock out these lines right here real quick. Not really sure how they're being held on. Oh yeah the bolt for the pan. Okay. Yeah we're leaking. Come out here I think. One of those houses. But yeah, try to get this uh, harness off of here. Moving right along. Uh, got the harness disconnected from the uh, starter down there. Got the starter right here. Oof. When I actually stand back and look, I'm like, dang, I actually took all that shit off. <laughs> but, uh, now, we gotta get these, uh, <sighs> transmission lines right here. Disconnected from it. Don't think we really have to move them. Just gotta disconnect them. And then, uh, there's turning bolts, bell housing boys, and then uh, and girls, and then uh, you know, motor mounts. Then we gotta set the old engine down. Just let them go bolts. I might just use a few out of the bell housing here, like it originally planned. See how that goes. We'll see how that goes. And uh, yeah, get this unhooked real quick. And all that's connected. Those was. One little bracket here on the side of this old smog pump bracket. And then two down on the pan, very easy. I think they were like some stupid 12 millimeter and then this one up here ended up being a 15. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and unhook the, uh, the headers from the intermediate pipe. That way they collect down there. Can't really see, you see one bolt. Um, get those two off and then, uh, yeah, but yeah. Those are now unhooked. Only two on each side. They weren't too bad. Kind of rusty, but I haven't needed to spray Panther Piss on anything, or WD-40, on anything. No PB Blaster, anywhere. Because um, I got a little bit of lube right here from training, you know, I just, yeah. But uh, only thing holding this engine on is the motor mounts and bell housing boat bolts. And, uh, that's really it. So now, I had that out for something else I was doing. But, uh, just gotta multitask when you got much time. I'm gonna go ahead and set this back down because I figured, or wait, I'm actually gonna get this guy. See, I don't think the motor mount or the bell housing bolts are gonna be long enough. But, we'll see. I don't know, I'll probably just set it down. And uh, when we find some bolts, we'll put the old motor on there and tear it up and see what actually went wrong. So it's actually keeping this this guy from turning. You get a bolt or on something on that, it does not turn at all. But uh, yeah, let's set this guy down with this pallet somewhere out of the way. Uh, can't forget to lighten the load a little bit. <laughs> he's having a 
Train. Took me a pretty good break. Um, I already got the uh, nut off that motor mount right there. Just gotta get that one off. Oh. And then all that's left is these freaking bell housing bolts. Doing all this with the uh, basic hand tools, guys. I haven't used one swivel socket actually, now that I think about it. Um, electric tool, uh, air tool. Nothing, just basic hand tools, and we're about to get this motor out. And just like that, all the uh, motor mounts and the transmission bolts are in here for safekeeping. Woo. Gotta take that apart a little bit, I think. So now we just need to hook it up, knock the motor mount bolts out. Uh, just bolts in there, no nuts on them, so. Figure out how we're gonna do the chain here, try to get it out as level as we can, cause I'm not really too sure. But I feel like I'm forgetting something. <laughs> I mean I got everything that I can see. Huh. Guess I'll find out. Hopefully uh we can get this on the uh mount here, no problem. here put it on the driver's side of the upper plane the lower plane I'm here think, thinking it would just raise up this side instead of this side so I didn't hit that all this but we will see what if we break we'll just replace I already had to cut the uh, condenser completely off because I couldn't find my disconnecting tool for that it's only 75 bucks so that's okay I got quoted uh, over a thousand dollars like almost 1500 for this engine replacement so as long as I beat that, I feel like I'm gonna do okay. And as I anticipated, getting over these bushes is gonna be kinda hard. Right up against this guy right here, really badly. So I spoke with a colleague of mine. I'll let you guys meet him real quick. And uh, removed the, uh, he's a really nice guy once you get to know him. And removed the uh, actual bolts that mounted to the motor here, so I should be able to just lift it right on out of here. So I'm just gonna try to pull it out. Um, and that's it. She's out. Came out really easily. Everything's, uh, well, I kind of expected that. We tore her in half, can't you expect her to bleed a little. Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah. Fill it and push that, baby. Alright. Okay. Alright, hold on. Give me a second. If anybody's wondering, I'm using a Galaxy S10 Plus to do everything. All this recording, all this stuff. So if you can't hear me, I'm sorry. And I know the videos come out pretty good because I'm watching myself at home and with my son. But this is it, guys. She is. She's out. Old engine out, you know? Well, not all the way, I mean, we gotta move this bucket of guts out of the way. And just try to, I'll try to yank her one-handed, just to show you how easy it is. And we hit the freaking oil pan, I think. Yeah, a little bit. I anticipated that. 
Just lift it up, that's all. So yeah. Overall, I would say it's been pretty much a cinch. A couple days. You know, about six, seven hours. Taking a lot of breaks. Like a lot. I took my time. I didn't, I didn't get in a rush or anything. I haven't busted a single knuckle. I did stab myself in the stomach leaning over on that thing right there. That's about it. I didn't even have to take off the fan. Yeah, oil drained out. Here she is, guys. Big old ass V10. Those headers look pretty cool. I don't care what anybody says. 150 bucks, 200 bucks on eBay. Properly tigged, never cracked, nothing. I didn't even have flex pipe on my shit. Well, I might put flex pipe. Because, uh, yeah, we're gonna have to push some boost for this guy. We don't want no flexing, no cracking, no welds, or nothing like that. Yeah, I'm gonna get her out of here, back it out all the way. That way we can look on the inside of this truck. Yep, and that's the inside. She is fucking filthy. Um, I'm gonna get all these wires up out of the way the best I can. Um, take a lot of this off because I don't want to power wash in there but I'm gonna power wash all this I have to power wash the concrete off because yeah but uh that's like my favorite color so it's all good <laughs> burnt training fluid no it's it's not burnt guys I promise you it's very red very like you can smell how sweet it is like and it's been sitting for nine ten months this truck has before I actually got to it and uh yeah the old motor here is, uh, we're gonna get it on the engine stand eventually. We're gonna get this thing tore apart, see what actually went, see what parts are good, and uh, yeah, see if anybody needs anything, because the thermostat housings, people need those. Uh, not water, really water pump, but a timing covers, people need those. Um, you know, some people, mess up their cam. I don't know what my cam looks like. Or crank. We will find out. But, uh, it's gonna have to take off all this and the oil pan. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that. No problem. Right now we're gonna worry about this. The new engine. Um, we're gonna have to go ahead and take off the upper clean them here and linkage. Let's see. Cool packs. Get all that off, you know. God, the, everything looks so clean god I just love it this one's just 270,000 miles worth of dirt <laughs> but uh yeah we're gonna get all that off and uh you know all the other little stuff like this we're gonna have to take off this whole harness that's in here because that's where they cut it but we have all that on our truck and it all works perfectly. This truck had no check engine lights other than the one that it flashed and the oil wasn't pumping and it had no pressure. But yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We're gonna have to take this off. Get the, uh, get this guy how it is on this motor, which all, all it really is, and I'll go in depth more about it later on. Um, you know, these two bolts here, the whole thing comes off. Then on the back, uh, there's a little keyway that just kind of where this sits. Well, you just drill a hole right up at about 12 o'clock. Then set it back in there. Tighten it back in. Yes, this is reverse threaded, I think. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah. Fucking guts. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this shit out. Got us some shit a lot. I need to stop that. And uh, but we can see what we're working with. Make sure we didn't pinch anything. See if uh, we can go ahead and replace this gearbox because uh, it's I'm pretty sure it's the original one. Redhead makes one, and those things are beauts. They're so nice. And as long as I beat, you know, like I said, the fourteen, fifteen hundred dollar budget, you know, then I'm doing okay. Even if I'm right at that, you know, at least I come out on top. I'm gonna get a new a Borgson steering shaft probably. Get the gearbox updated. I've got to fix the back brakes. 
because uh, somehow I messed those up. And the last time I remember driving this thing, I only had front brakes. But it's okay. Carbon ceramic, slotted, drilled the slotted brake rotors. So they did pretty good, even though it was kind of scary sometimes. Uh, but yeah, that's it, guys. That's it for part two. That right there is how you get a V10 488 engine out of a second gen Dodge. This is pretty much what you're working with. This I did myself. They don't have these um, on a second gen uh, V10. They do on the Cummins. The battery usually goes over here. Um, and this is usually underneath it getting all corroded. So I put it up here or it doesn't and then Put the battery over here. You can buy these on eBay for really cheap. Just use the same bolt you did on that side. Everything matches up, you know. But make sure you get the passenger side one. You can't just take your your you know and switch it over here. You can't do that. You have to buy this one and then just move. I moved my coolant reservoir back that way. Um, just it works. Uh, I'm just screwed down. These remind me of something I had an idea about. We are gonna be doing train horns. Oh, it would be so cool to have train horns on this truck. I'm not really sure where to, where to put them. I gotta look around, I guess, or maybe let me know if you guys know anybody that has badass ones or where you guys might put them in this kind of truck. So, this is it. That's how you get a V10 out. It wasn't hard. Most of the steps are there for you guys. Um, just gotta be really careful. Don't, don't, you know, stop. You gotta make sure you, you know, stop and think. Don't, don't, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> make sure you got a good shop crane. <laughs> uh, only reason why this one didn't have any problems is because it's not even, not even 20% of what this thing could lift. That thing could lift 6,000 pounds. So, I mean, I didn't really have to worry. If you guys get a crane and try to lift this out, just, just be really careful. Know where to set your bolts, like I did, driver's side. That way it lifts up the, uh, the engine like this, away from your master cylinder. And you can get it out with your manifold. And even though, I mean, it'd be way easier with this manifold. But yeah part two guys um in the next video we'll be covering um cleaning all this up getting all this clean and organized and getting the new 488 uh ready pretty much for installation all right till next time and uh last thing if you made it this far in the video i want to say please find me a mechanic that can you can drop your truck off come back the next evening and have your engine all the way out like this and not need a bunch of damn bullshit tools and everything else this is basic stuff guys nothing but hand tools anybody can do this all right have a good night